How did a Belgian politician rise from private to general in the German military in just three and a half years? So who was Waffen-SS Brigadier General Leon de Grill? Why did Adolf Hitler have so much faith in him? And when giving him his oak leaf to his knight's cross, state, if I had a son, I would like him to be like you. Why was he condemned to death in absentia in his native Belgium after World War II? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Leon Joseph Marie Ignace de Grel was born on June 15, 1906 in Bouillon in Luxembourg. He was the fifth child of Marie Beauvais and Edouard de Grel, Catholics from France. His father was elected to the Provincial Council of Luxembourg in 1904 and became a respected conservative politician as a member of the Catholic Party. Leon de Grel had a classical Jesuit education and while intelligent and well-read, did not attend to his studies as much as he did political activities, joining the Catholic Party. Separating from the Catholic Party for their lenience with the Communists and other factions, in 1935, the Christus Rex political element became the fascist Rexist party that wanted to preserve right-wing Catholic control of the nation, led by then 29-year-old de Grel, who also ran their newspaper. De Grel attacked the financial and business industries for conducting business with Stalin before the war, claiming that they were pro-communist and needed to be overthrown. Running a campaign supporting the middle-class, anti-democratic platforms that united several right-wing elements, such as the anti-communists and war veterans, the Rexist won 11.5% of the votes cast and 21 of the 202 seats in the Chamber of Representatives, sending shockwaves through Belgium. In 1936, de Grel met with Joseph Goebbels, Adolf Hitler, and Benito Mussolini, admiring their anti-communist positions and to gather financial and political support. However, these connections only hurt de Grel's movement and the Rexist party fell into disfavor. And in the next election, they only gathered 4.4% of the vote and were basically dead politically. In 1940, when Belgium was invaded by Germany, de Grel was detained with fellow Rexist leaders Victor Matisse and Sergei Doring. De Grel was then handed over into French custody and moved around until he was located by Hitler's ambassador to France, Otto Abetz. The Rexists were not taken seriously, and due to their street violence methods and openly anti-Jewish banking and anti-communist platforms, but Hitler took notice. In 1940, later on, de Grel endorsed the German occupation of Belgium, which saw more defections from the Rexist party who disagreed with him. In 1941, at age 35, de Grel was freed by the Germans and enlisted as a private in the German army, and was instrumental in creating the Walloon Legion, with 860 volunteers enlisting in the German army. After rigorous training, they were assigned anti-partisan duties assigned to the 100th Jaeger Division in the Soviet Union as Operation Barbarossa continued. After the Walloons were assigned as Panzer Grenadiers to SS General Felix Steiner's 5th Waffen-SS Panzer Division, they earned his respect, and de Grel was given a field commission to Army Lieutenant. The 5th SS was a division of many European nationals mixed with Germans, a true international division. De Grel was given home leave in March 1943, but there was an issue that arose when his wife's lover, a Luftwaffe officer, was found shot in the chest and head in de Grel's home. De Grel was cleared of any involvement in the murder. After meeting with General Gottlob Berger and Heinrich Himmler and with Steiner's reports, on June 1, 1943, the Walloon Legion was integrated into the Waffen-SS as an SS Sturm Brigade Wallonian. De Grel served at the front off and on, and his military capability saw him rapidly promoted within the Waffen-SS. While in the Ukraine with the SS Lieutenant General Paul Hauser, de Grel had a suggestion, which went to Hitler, and he approved it. It was a public relations hearts and minds campaign to convert them over to the German side. They rebuilt damaged and built new Orthodox churches for the Ukrainians who had suffered under Stalin. They located their surviving priests who had not been killed or sent to gulags. De Grel's efforts saw thousands of Ukrainians join the German military to fight communism and Stalin, which increased his value to Himmler and Hitler. De Grel returned to the Legion after completing mountain warfare training, earning his Edelweiss in November 1943. He would find himself promoted to captain and in command of half of the 2,000 men. 
January 1944 saw the Wallonian Legion, now labeled the 20th Der, or of the SS Wallonian Regiment, encircled with German units at the Chakassi Corson Pocket. The vicious fighting lasted through February, and by the time of the breakout, only 632 men remained alive. The girl had been seriously wounded, and the regimental commander, Colonel Lucien Lippert, had been killed. But the carnage they inflicted upon the Red Army was incredible. De Grill had orchestrated one of the greatest retrograde operations in military history as he extricated the German and Wallonian force in a tactical withdrawal, creating overlapping, bounding retreats and flanking fire. De Grill, already wearing the Iron Cross in both classes, the German Cross in gold, the Wound Badge in gold, the Close Combat Badge in gold, and the Knight's Cross for Combat hero Heroism at Chakassi, was promoted to Sturmbannführer, or SS Major. De Grail later began a propaganda tour across Germany and Western Europe, but on July 8, 1944, his older brother Eduard was murdered by political rivals. Retaliations then occurred as he was on his recruiting tour. On July 23, 1944, De Grail returned to the Wallonian SS in time for the Battle of Narva in Estonia. De Grail's masterful use of his limited combi combined arms created carnage among the Soviets as he ordered another tactical withdrawal. Following his actions in that battle, he was summoned to Berlin on August 25, 1944 to meet Hitler and receive the oak leaves to his Knight's Cross, and he was promoted to Colonel, or Standartenführer. In attendance were SS Colonel General Herbert Giele, himself a Diamonds recipient, Heinrich Himmler, and SS Major General Hermann Fagelein. De Grill was told that his Wallonian Legion was now going to be designated the 28th Der Waffen SS Division Wallonian, and he was the new division commander. In December, the division was assigned a supporting armored unit and returned to the front in January 1945. During the brutal fighting, the 28th SS was almost totally destroyed at the Battle of the Oder Nisse in April 1945. De Grail's tactical withdrawal enabled German forces to retreat and prepare for the continued Soviet offensive into Pomerania, and Soviet losses were again incredible. He helped save over 20,000 Germans from death or captivity by his delaying actions. The unit was disbanded, and de Grail was in Berlin, headed to meet Himmler in Lübeck on March 30th. Himmler promoted him to Oberfuhrer, or SS Brigadier General, and de Grail joined Himmler in Denmark later. In effect, de Grail had gone from private to Brigadier General in three and a half years due to his bravery in combat and successful field commands. De Grail boarded a ship for Norway, and upon arrival was placed on a Heinkel HE-111 bomber, and they were flying to Spain when the plane crashed on the beach of La Concha at San Sebastián, and de Grail was severely injured. Due to his being labeled a traitor in Belgium, which was officially neutral, yet invaded and occupied by Germany, de Grail knew that as a traitor, he would need sanctuary when the war was over. Belgium pressured the United States and United Kingdom to have Spain extradite de Grail for trial, but Francisco Franco would not hear of it. Besides, de Grail had been cleared of any war crimes, so there was no Interpol warrant issued. De Grill obtained Spanish citizenship and adopted the name of Jose Leon Ramirez Reina. Spanish intelligence kept him in hiding and informed him every time that they located Belgian agents posing as tourists who entered the country looking for him to, abdu to abduct him for public trial or assassinate him. During his interviews in May 1984 and April 1985, De Grill stated, I have no regrets about the course I took. I followed my conscience and fought the best I could for what I believed in. I was, and still am, anti-communist, and would fight them again tomorrow. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free, and please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas, and we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.